Shields Up Ironbreakers. Today we're going to be talking about No Rest for the Wicked. This is a game that I've been following pretty much since it was announced during the Game Awards. It is a game that I've been very excited to check out because of the stuff that the developers have been talking about, the design philosophy behind the game and all of that good stuff, and it finally released in early access yesterday. So naturally we jumped in. At this point I've played around 15 hours of the game across two live streams that you can find here in the channel just in case you want to check out some more gameplay, and I have a lot lot of things to talk about in regards to how I feel about the game. So one of the first things that I want to make it perfectly clear because I've seen a lot of people jump into the live stream and ask me, hey Rurikon, how does this compare in regards to Diablo 4? How does this compare in regards to The Last Epoch? And let me just make one thing perfectly clear. This game is not those games. It's not even playing in the same pool as those games. The only thing that you're going to get from this game is a somewhat similar isometric perspective. And even that is significantly different because of some of the technology that the developers are using in their engine to represent the way the world looks, which is actually quite impressive and a very good thing in my opinion. Now, for all those of you wondering, what do you mean? It's an action RPG. It looks like an action RPG. Clearly, it's going to be an action RPG. The thing is, uh, for a lot of people, the term action RPG has become synonymous to Diablo, Path of Exile, Last Epoch, when in fact, a lot of other games can be considered action RPGs. Like, for instance, Dark Souls, for all intents and purposes, is an action RPG. But I get the denomination that players go for and all of that stuff, and I'm not here to argue that. So naturally, for a lot of people, you know, Dark Souls has gotten like its own genre, the Souls-like genre, whatever. But basically, what No Rest for the Wicked is, is if you were to put a combat more similar to what you would get in a game like a Dark Souls or a Souls-like, and you put that in the perspective of a Diablo or a Path of Exile, but at the same time, you also add some uh, survival elements to it, which I know feels uh, a little bit weird, but it is very important for me that you understand that even though when we are engaging in combat and doing all of these things in No Rest for the Wicked, some things might seem a little bit similar to other action RPGs, but the reality is the gameplay is very different. No Rest for the Wicked uses animation commitment, which means when you commit to an attack, you are committed to that attack. Your character is going to be stuck in that attack animation until he either gets canceled out of it by getting hit by an enemy or until your attack actually connects with the enemy and it's the same thing for the enemies which is very different from the traditional action rpgs like diablo path of exile which usually revolve more around you you know you form your build and then you just run through the map and you clear the whole map with a couple of button presses and destroy everything i don't think that is ever going to be the case for this particular game and i don't think that is the design intent from the developers so just make sure to keep that in mind now, for a lot of people, this might be a bit of a turnoff. For me, it is quite the opposite. I've been saying for ages that I wish there was a game that would do more slower, deliberate, methodical combat as opposed to just button mashing my way and destroying the whole map. Like, I understand the appeal of both styles. I like both styles, but this style that they're going for with no rest for the wicked is a lot more rare. And again, I want to make sure that to emphasize something that throughout your gameplay of No Rest for the Wicked, you are going to be expected to go out on gathering runs where you're supposed to chop down trees, mine ore nodes, dig patches of dirt to collect materials and stuff that you can then use to upgrade your city through building projects. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. There's even a housing system. And while there is fast travel, there's also a couple of limits to the way that the fast travel works in this game. So these are all things that you have to keep in mind. And this is why I say that even though it's got the perspective of an action RPG, it also has survival elements. So it's like Dark Soulsy, an isometric perspective with survival elements, but it is a really, really fun experience. So now it's start by talking about the visuals and this is definitely one field where this game absolutely shines the visuals are fantastic i think the game looks absolutely phenomenal i think that is not even a point that you can kind of argue other than 
the art style might turn off some people, like the way that the characters look because the their limb proportions are not the traditional limb proportions that you would get in a traditional uh, character. These characters have like exaggerated, elongated arms, short legs, and they look a little bit weird, but it is a very original art style that personally I like, and it is a very colorful, and the whole thing almost looks like a painting in motion. And I know that this is something that is told a lot of, t uh, a lot of times for a lot of video games, but in this case, I feel like this is the best that this definition has ever been applied. And the game looks absolutely gorgeous. The lighting of the game is awesome. It's got a uh, dynamic day-night cycle. Uh, it's got dynamic lighting that makes every scene look completely different. It's got a weather system. When it's raining, it absolutely drenches the whole map and it looks phenomenal. There's even like little driplets of water that as you are doing your attacks, they like get sprayed across the screen uh, with your weapon. It's, it's very impressive. So like from the visual standpoint, the game is an absolute visual spectacle. When it comes to animations, it is even more impressive with the, the sense of weight that they've managed to convey with these animations behind each weapon that you use is very impressive. Not just you, but also the enemies. The movement of the characters is very believable as you are walking across the screen. The swaying of the brushes and trees and all of this stuff, it, it's fantastic. Animations are fantastic, visuals are fantastic, art style are fa is fantastic. Just keep in mind, I don't think that this art style is going to be appealing for everyone. I've already seen a couple of cases of people saying that they don't like it. And I understand why, because it is quite unique and different, but to me, it's absolutely phenomenal. Now, another thing that I thought was very impressive is the cinematics on this game. Cinematics on this game are not pre-rendered. They take place in the game's engine. And because of their unique art style that they have for these characters, they are able to convey expression in a way that I've very rarely seen in video games. Like, this studio is absolutely punching above its weight class, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, you see some of these cinematics and you're going to be like, oh my god, the, the expressions on these characters, it's insane. It's very, very impressive. Now, having said that, I also haven't seen a lot of cinematics because we're only 15 hours in and this is still in early access. So there, there's a lot of content that still is not in the game and all of that stuff. So also keep that in mind. The game is in early access and nothing tells that more than when we get to literally the biggest problem that I have with the game. And that is performance. Performance is has been, at least for me, very, very bad. Now, I understand that once again, we're getting to that point where it's like, Barurkan, you have AMD GPUs, you are paying your AMD tax, and so on and so forth. And sure, whatever, but I mean, look, there's two GPUs on the market, right? I mean, there's more than two GPUs, but you guys get the idea. There's two brands of GPUs. I guess there's three now because Intel is joining in on the pack. But like, look, the, there's the two big GPU manufacturers are NVIDIA and AMD. I kind of feel like you should test at least for those two to, to make things work. And on AMD, the performance, at least for me, has been absolutely abysmal. Now, I have a 6900 XT, as you guys are probably well aware of. My processor is not the issue. It's a Ryzen 9 5900X. Uh, you know, we're not getting bottlenecked by any by anything here. We got 32 gigs of RAM, an NVMe drive. There's no bottlenecks here. The only problem could potentially be the GPU. And yeah, uh, when the game launched, I actually tried running it at 1080p, lowest possible settings, and I still wasn't able to get uh, like a solid 60 FPS, which was woof. Since then, things have improved a little bit because I've been fiddling with the settings and, you know, I've been making a lot of concessions like turning V-Sync, turning V-Sync off, dealing with screen tearing and all these other problems, turning like AMD frame generation on the AMD app on PC and basically, you know, doing my best to try and 
fix this stuff and performance is still not perfect. So there's a lot of performance issues on my end. Uh, I'm sure that things are going to be somewhat different for all of you NVIDIA dudes out there. Feel free to let me know in the comments if your experience is significantly different when it comes to that. But I've heard from other people that they're also having performance issues. So I don't know if it's just limited to AMD, but that has definitely been my experience. And like I said, this is the single biggest problem that I personally have with the game up until this point. I have other slightly minor problems with the game, but the performance is hands down one of its biggest issues. Now, the LSS is still not available, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. So if you are, you know, maybe on the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to settings and all of that stuff, my recommendation would be uh, maybe wait a little bit. Uh, I'll definitely be reporting on stuff here in the channel and letting you guys know if things change as we do live streams and all that stuff. And I'll be tweeting about it as well. So you can follow me on Twitter because, I'm, you know, I, I always post stuff in there whenever it's like just very quick early impressions and whatnot. But yeah, uh, right now my recommendation would be to hold off maybe unless you have like a god tier NVIDIA system, then maybe you'll be able to just punch through it. But yeah, that's where we're at when it comes to the performance. But also remember, this is on Steam, so you can always just buy the game, test it for yourself. Just make sure not to go past those two hours and then refund it if it doesn't run well on your system. That'd be probably what I would do if you're super excited about it, right? So that's another option as well. But anyways, that's the uh, visuals, performance, all of that good stuff. Now let's jump into sound. And when it comes to sound, I think that the sound in this game is absolutely phenomenal. Stuff is impactful. You can really like feel the, the swings of the swords. Or in my case, I've been playing with a really big two-handed hammer bonking everything. And every single time that I hit something, it feels good because the animations are good like i've mentioned they're very visceral brutal animations but on top of it the sound is also impactful enough and really brings the boom as you bring in the hammer down hell even mining an ore node sounds fantastic even chopping down a tree sounds good so the sounds are really really good the ambience of the game is also phenomenal like it's incredibly immersive and the thing is when you already have this really good art style good visuals fantastic animations you add this phenomenal sound incredibly immersive ambience like all good and the game is very very good the issue here is because of my performance problems uh, sometimes I have audio cutouts, so I'm playing the game, you know, game stutters a little bit, audio turns off and on, it's, that is very, you know, it really breaks immersion when that happens, so performance is also hurting us from the sound perspective, because a lot of times in video games, you know, even if your game is stuttering, your audio can still pull through, it's not the case with No Rest for the Wicked, so if you have performance issues, audio is also going to suffer, which is a bit of a problem. Another thing that I would say about the audio would be that I would hope that they, in the future, they add a couple of more background tracks for when you're just running around, exploring, and, um, you know, when you're, when you're not actively engaged in a boss fight or something like that, and I'm just running around chopping down trees, it'd be nice to have a little uh, track in the background. As a matter of fact, uh, Moon Studios, they're the ones behind Ori and the Blind Forest, and earlier today in my live stream, I was like, man, I really wish there was a little bit of music as I'm playing through here, because it, it'd be cool. So I just pulled up the, the soundtrack of Ori, and obviously it's not going to be as adequate as a dedicated soundtrack, because sound and soundtrack is just something that I find so important for a video game, right? That you can't just put another video game soundtrack in there and expect it to be perfect. But even though it wasn't perfect, it was such a better experience just having a little bit of an audio track in the background, just as you're chilling, picking up materials, fishing, doing all of these things. It felt really nice. So that would be something that I would definitely recommend developers to also check out because it could be really cool. But that's audio. Other than the uh, potential, <clears throat> my apologies, other than potentially the... Um, performance hiccups here and there uh the audio is also pretty much phenomenal again i just wish we could get a couple more uh tracks for background as you're exploring and doing stuff i think that'd be really cool now when it comes to the story of the game i actually think that the story is uh setting up to be very very interesting you start on a ship you get shipwrecked apparently you're this special warrior 
the Serum Warrior and stuff get, starts getting more revealed as you play through the game. You start learning that Serum Warriors are very important for the lore of this world. And then there's this plague that is coming down. And there's a, a couple of intrigues when it comes to church and state. And there's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff happening, but the story has me invested. I don't want to get too deep into it either because I want people to be able to experience it for themselves. But suffice to say that I actually thought that the story was uh, pretty good. It's doing pretty good so far. So far. Because again, we are in early access. I only played 15 hours up until this point. So my understanding of the story is still somewhat limited. So let's talk about the meat and potatoes, shall we? 15 minutes into this video, we're getting to the meat and potatoes. The gameplay of No Rest for the Wicked. It is awesome. You have that whole packaging of a traditional ARPG with the perspective and all of that stuff. You have quests that you can go on and do. Uh, but the combat really is the highlight for me because it is exactly what I wanted. I wanted that animation, commitment, combat. You have dodges, you have blocks, you have parries. In case people are wondering, you can play it with either controller or mouse and keyboard. Mouse and keyboard uses WASD. I'm going to be real. I haven't really played that much with mouse and keyboard because the game just feels so good on controller that I just, I barely even use it. I thought that I was going to use a uh, mouse and keyboard potentially for inventory management, but not even that because it's actually so well done that I don't even feel the need to do that. So that's been pretty cool. That's not to say that it's perfect. There's definitely some things that can be improved, particularly in the inventory management uh, department because we're going to get into that some more. But yeah, so the combat has all the things that you would expect of a souls like you got your dodges your blocks your parries haven't really mastered parrying all that much because this game's combat is a lot about reach which means if you get more reach than your enemies you can really do some pretty crazy stuff you can just abuse enemies without them barely being able to touch you and it's the same thing when it comes to bosses the first couple of bosses that you fight you're going to notice man these bosses have hella reach and impressive tracking. Yes, enemies have extremely impressive tracking. Like sometimes you would think that something would not hit you because you're running or you're dodging, but it's like some projectiles almost home in on you. They don't really home in on you, but it almost feels like it because enemy AI has like damn near predictive tracking. I was very impressed. So, you know, but at the end of the day, it still is about pattern recognition. So once you start recognizing the patterns of enemy attacks, it becomes a lot easier to go ahead and beat the crap out of them. However, even though this takes that Souls-like approach to gameplay, you don't get a replenishable heal. So it's not like, oh, I died. Here's my five Estus flasks back. Uh-uh. You're going to have to craft every single meal that you, you're going to use. Because you, you, you basically use food in this game. It's got like, I think a 20 second cooldown or maybe 30 second cooldown. I, I don't actually remember at this point. But basically you use a piece of food that regenerates your health. And sometimes depending on the food that you eat, can have other benefits like, oh, now you also have additional stamina. And all that good stuff for a couple of seconds. Or maybe you get additional health for a couple of seconds. But then the cooldown kicks in and you can't just like chug, chug, chug. So after you eat, you're going to have to like, you know, roll around for a little bit, survive for a little bit parry, block, do whatever you got to do to survive. And only then you can like heal again and get back into the fight. But yeah, that that means that you're going to need to craft food. Often you're going to have to find food. And it, it always requires two ingredients in order for you to do some proper food. So you're going to need this plant called Artemisia. Then you're either going to need some mushrooms or some meat or a bunch of other stuff that you'll find throughout the world. But basically, you're going to want to get familiar with the, the cooking system because those are going to be your heals and you are going to need to kind of like master that. So keep that in mind. And then there's the other thing, which is there is a durability system as well. And that is your death penalty. So when you die, you don't actually lose any physical item, so to speak, but all of your items take durability damage, and if you happen to have used a bunch of food in an attempt and then you fail, all of that food is wasted. So that's how the developers are going to keep you on the straight and narrow and make sure that you respect bosses instead of just throwing yourself at them repeatedly, which kind of like is something that games like Souls allow you to do. They're just like, okay, I'm going to throw myself at this boss until I eventually kill it. You can't really do that in this game because every attempt is going to cost you resources 
And eventually you can find yourself in dire straits if you're not careful. So, you know, you are going to be required to do a little bit of grinding. Now, the game does also have a stamina system. So dodging consumes stamina, attacking consumes stamina. Uh, all of the, the usual stuff applies. And if you don't have stamina, you can't dodge. You're pretty much, you know, kind of screwed. Then there's also a bit of a posture type system. So if you get hit really hard and you're trying to block, you can get... Um, you can get your guard broken, then enemies can go up to you, beat the crap out of you. Uh, enemies can also get their guard broken if you hit them hard enough. So, you know, there's systems like that to allow you to take advantage of, uh, of enemies as well as enemies take advantage of you. Uh, so that's uh, another system and you have to, again, pay attention to your stamina. Now, besides just melee attacks, which is the only thing that you're going to be seeing in this video, uh, because I've mostly just played melee. There's also ranged attacks. I believe that there's bows, maybe crossbows. I know that there's spell casting, but I haven't really played with that too much. Uh, beyond dodging, blocking, parrying, and regular attacks also have charged attacks, although not all weapons have charged attacks. So like the hammer that I'm using right now, which is a super rare hammer that I picked up early in the game, it does not have uh, a charged attack, interestingly enough. But you can do a running attack, which is different. There's also dodging attacks, which are also different. So each of these has different animations, different movesets, and all of that stuff. And then beyond that, there's also rune attacks. And these are somewhat customizable even though again i haven't gotten to experience that system all that much because i was very lucky and i just picked up a super powerful hammer very early in the game and it comes fully decked out with its own uh rune slots and that's been what i've been using pretty much throughout my whole adventure but fundamentally the rune system allows you to pick up special attacks maybe from different weapons and place them in the weapon that you're using and that allows, it's basically like special attacks. So the better you do in combat you start getting this resource called focus and then you can use that focus to cast the, the special attacks of your weapon. So your weapon might do like a special uppercut attack, a special thrusting attack, something along those lines. Some weapons will enchant with fire. Some weapons will, you know, do, you can throw them. So there's different special attacks for different weapons, and these are all things that you're going to want to consider, and these are customizable to a certain extent, depending on the rarity of your weapon. So in my weapon, I can't customize the runes because it was a rare weapon. But, you know, if you have like a not a rare weapon, you can customize it further and get special rune attacks, special gems on there. So there's this whole customization system. Beyond that, there's also uh, itemization similar to what you would expect from Diablo. So the items are going to be somewhat random. Uh, so there, there's going to be stuff that you're going to want to equip. And then the rarity of this game is actually interesting because there are these special items that you can get, which are purple, which usually signify epic items. But in this game, they're cursed. So they might have some really good stuff, but then they'll have like a, a down of something that is a negative thing. So to give you guys an idea, I have a pair of pants that have regeneration, which is really good because, you know, in between me doing attacks on mobs, I'm regenerating my health and I go back up to full. However, it also reduces my healing by like 30 something percent or something along those lines. So it comes with a downside. I've also seen items that are very, very evil. So like for instance, oh, if you die, you lose experience. Or if you take damage, you lose experience. So there's some really nasty cursed affixes on some of those items. So it's a risk reward thing. But then there's also items that are just good if you don't want to engage with that. So there's that too. There's an upgrade system for your weapons. So you can kind of like keep them relevant for additional levels as well which is what I'm doing with my big beefy hammer. So yeah, that's uh, that's some good stuff right there. Again, do keep in mind you will be expected to gather resources uh, and all of that stuff so that you can um, then do a bunch of crafting things. But um, before we even jump into that, because I want to get a little bit more in depth with that, one of the things that I would also like to mention is the dungeons in this game. So you know how a lot of action RPGs, they're procedurally generated, and there's only so much that procedural generation can really do, right? They're going to grab a couple of assets, and they're going to try to put them in a way that makes sense, which is cool because it keeps the, you know, it keeps your adventure always and always changing and all of that good stuff. That's fine. In this game, levels are handcrafted. And when I say handcrafted, these levels are not only gorgeous, but they're also a joy to navigate. Like the first proper dungeon that I did, which for those of you that are curious, it was, 
I wouldn't really consider Mar Mariner's Keep a dungeon because that's kind of like fairly, um, I guess it is. It's, a, it's the very beginning thing in the game. It's, it's this area called Mariner's Keep, but it's a super simplistic zone. But to me, the first real dungeon is the sewer area, which a lot of players that play this game will know what I'm talking about. That sewer dungeon is absolutely phenomenal. Like, you're running through the dungeon, you're engaging enemies, but at the same time, you're solving these puzzles as you're going through, which is something that I've really, really wanted out of dungeons, because I feel like both in action RPGs, uh, particularly games of this nature with this type of perspective and all of that stuff, right? But not even just that, even in MMOs, when you're going through a dungeon, it just feels like most MMOs nowadays will make your... And again, this is not an MMO, it's just like comparison that I'm bringing up, but it feels like most of the dungeons are super, like, bog standard, where, okay, you're gonna kill this number of packs, and then there's gonna be a boss fight, then you're gonna keep going, you know, you're on rails. It's very much an on-rails experience. And in this game, you really are going out there and having an adventure, like, oh, I'm having to figure out these puzzles, I'm having to find these levers that open up different things and push platforms, and I'm doing platforming while I'm going through the dungeon, and sometimes you might not even find everything in the dungeon because there's actually stuff that's super well hidden, you're triggering levers, la raising the water level, and then you can swim on it and cross over to different locations. It is really, really cool. I've, I've been having an... Every time that I'm doing a dungeon, I'm always impressed because not only that, but dungeons are... They feel very different. So like when I was in the sewer dungeon, I was like, okay, this, this is this dungeon. I did another one that's kind of like more like an area is like this quarry area. That was a, also felt very different. Then went into a prison. And then there's another one that you go into a cave and you get high off of this flower and then you start seeing platforms that don't exist in reality, but you can go to them. I was like, this is so creative. This is so cool because it's not like every dungeon is bog standards. Every dungeon has its theme and has, you know, different things that you're doing on it. And at the same time, while you're going through the dungeon, you're also collecting resources. You're mining ore nodes. Maybe you're chopping down trees. Maybe you're digging, you know, pieces of dirt and you're collecting resources that will then be used for the whole gathering and, and crafting portion of the game. And you're also getting loot and opening chests and doing all of these things. But it just feels so well designed. And the level of verticality that you have in some of these levels is impressive. Again, I cannot overstate how well designed and polished everything feels. If it wasn't for the fact that the performance was so bad, I'd... God, I, I really just want to be able to say, like, guys, just, just get this game right now. But the performance is such a big issue that it's just so frustrating to have to kind of, like, hold my enthusiasm back a little bit because of all the performance problems, right? But anyway, yeah, Dungeons, phenomenal. The, overall, the gameplay experience so far has been an absolute blast. I, I've really, really enjoyed it. So now let's talk a little bit more about gathering and crafting, because that's one of the things that is going to be significantly different than what you would expect uh, in an ARPG uh, that looks like this. But you will be expected to go out and collect things, particularly like one of the things that I found... Uh, a little bit harder because I keep running out of it is uh, wood. You're always having to chop down trees and getting a bunch of wood. You need as much wood as possible. You also need as much ore as possible. And you're going to be needing stuff that comes from the dirt too because I think you're going to be needing a lot of clay a little bit later on as well. So these are all materials that it's not really about combat or killing enemies or anything like that it's just about going out into the open world and just straight up okay i'm gonna grab my axe and i'm gonna start lumberjacking all over this place gathering wood gathering mineral nodes doing all of this stuff and then you're going to funnel those resources that you're getting sometimes you'll also be able to you know craft weapons and craft armor and doing all of that but a lot of times it is going to be at least in the beginning portions of the game it is going to be for you to do projects in sacrament so sacrament is this big hub city that you're going to get into very early into the game and this city is like super underdeveloped right now and so the whole thing is you grab these materials you take them over to this dude that oversees the you know the building of new structures in the city and you get to decide which structures get built first it seems like right now the plan is going to be that 
everybody's city is going to end up the same once you upgrade everything, which is something that I wish wasn't the case. Like, I wish that you kind of had to pick and choose based on, okay, so you want to have a city that has like a good blacksmith. Okay, you're going to, you know, you're not going to get maybe as much on the tailoring side of things. I think that would be really cool, but it doesn't seem like that's what they're doing. It's more like, okay, at the beginning of the game, what do you want to prioritize? The tailoring or the blacksmith, right? But fundamentally, you're going to be putting all of these things into these projects because not only they're going to improve uh, your ability to make better tools that you can gather things with more efficiency. Uh, you're going to be able to craft more materials. You're going to be able to upgrade more things. But also, they're going to improve your navigation through the city. Because navigating the city the first time that you get there is a pain in the ass. But it gets better once you start building these projects. It's like, okay, we now made this staircase that connects you to the place where you sleep and where you have your shared stash and all of these things. And then once you get enough of these projects done, and once you advance the story to a certain point, you can also buy a house. And the house actually mitigates one of the other problems that I have with the game, which is inventory management. The quality of life and in inventory management, that would be problem number two with the game. It is bad. I'm talking like step outside the world for five minutes and have to go back to the city bad. Okay. And the limited, the limits that you have on your inventory are also terrible. It, it's, it's very, it's very, it's extremely limiting. Let's put it like that. Like I would say that out of the 15 hours that I've spent playing the game, Easily four of those hours was just me running back and forth doing inventory management. Easily four of those hours. Because you get your inventory filled really fast and then you're wondering, oh, is this item useful? Is this item not useful? Is this something that I'm going to need? Is this something that I'm not going to need? And then you don't know, so you want to store everything. So you go to the stash that they give you and you put everything in there. And then, okay, this this also has is extremely limited. So now your stash is full. And now your stash is full and your inventory is full. And you're like, damn it. And so then you buy a house which you can buy a house in the game uh, after you get to a certain point in the story. And then you, you grab a couple of chests and you put chests in the house and you put materials on there. But then the problem is, once those materials are in a chest, you don't know, you know, unless you have a photographic memory, you don't know which chest those materials are in. Oh, did I put that in my shared stash? Did I put that in chest number one at the house? Chest number two at the house? And these are two locations that are, you know, depending on where you buy your house, they might be a little bit further apart. So you have to go check the stashes on your house, then check the stash on the rookery. And you have to do this because the NPCs do not have access to your stash. So say for instance, you go to the blacksmith and you want to upgrade your weapon, the blacksmith doesn't know what you have in your in your chests. So you need to go to the chests and get the materials and go back to the blacksmith. And I was like, bro, like, <laughs> Palworld did this so well. I wish everybody did it the same way. It's like, in Palworld, like, you put something in the chest, doesn't matter. Everybody knows where it is. It's right there. It's in the chest. It doesn't matter. It, all chests are connected. Everything is fine. There's no... There's no, you put it in the chest and you can forget it exists because it's there forever. You don't even have to worry about it. And I wish that all video games did that. That's what we need to do when it comes to this stuff. But yeah, inventory management is painful. And that is, you know, the, the two things. So those, those are like the two things. Performance and inventory management needs more quality of life. Other than that, the game in my book is absolutely phenomenal. Just keep in mind... We're still in early access. There's still a lot more to come. The game doesn't even have multiplayer yet, which is going to be one of their first updates that they're going to be doing for the game. So, you know, if you keep those things in mind, I think that the game is a ton of fun. And there's still content for me to do. And I'm going to be doing more content. going to be uh, streaming the game some more, checking some more stuff out. But for now, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed this video, if it was useful for you in any way, hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification, icon, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.